All right. We'll start with d4. e3, because we're not trying to play a uh, London or Trumpovsky or anything. And of course, this knight needs to come out. But we don't want to do that until we bring that pawn in front. There we go. And if d5, we know we want to put this knight here to cover the e4 square, right? So that'll be the plan. I'm trying to understand what he's planning with this. Maybe b5 and bishop b7? Because I look at that bishop here, no future. So I can almost expect the bishop to show up on that square. Let's just complete our pawn formation here. See what he wants to do. And it is going to be b5. So with these pieces aimed at the e4 square, I'm definitely thinking of knight d2 because I want to uh, control that. Uh, the other thing that comes to mind is bishop here, bishop here, bishop h4, just because it's a nice little uh, nice little pin there. So I'm kind of stuck between these two moves. If I play knight d2 and he plays there, it also might be time to push the stonewall formation forward. But I'm going to look to solve my problem with the bishop first. And we can bring the queen and knight to d2 after that. So let's bring our bishop here. Next idea, knight to d2. Okay, so he's played queen e8. That's fine. Let's bring the knight. Now, he's also done something. He's played d6. So he's not allowing our knight to go in there. So far, so good for my pieces. He's making a threat, but I'm defending it. I'm going to bring a rook over. And I mentioned something. I said, hey, if people are not allowing you to bring your knight into e5, at some point, it is time to just shove that e-pawn up the board because, if, look, if you can't put your knight there, it probably means they don't have any control of the center. So you probably want to play e4 yourself. So that's kind of what we're going off of here. Um, I'm looking at h3. Kick the knight out. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Also looking at just e4 in order to play e5, which is pretty much what we've been talking about. So those are the two moves I'm thinking of. Uh, h3 and e4 might do both of them um, for the moment I think it's probably a good piece of advice to boot this knight out when you get a chance um, he goes to h6 so I think it makes e4 look and make even more sense right because it maybe stops him from going to his desired square he plays f5 and we'll probably have a little think here taking is pretty much off the table we don't love bringing that knight into the action. Um, e5 is probably the top move I'm thinking of. Gets our pawn e5 like we want. Makes his bishop look bad. The knight has no square. The only other thing I'd consider here is just bringing my rook to the middle of the board. And maybe take back with the bishop, the queen, and keep pushing. But I'll, I'll go for this plan of e5. Looking to make a statement all right knight takes sure could take with the uh the pawns but i'll go for the knight this reminds us of our stone wall right getting that knight to e5 good feeling and again another option but i'm gonna stick to our pretty standard standard stuff of f takes e5 this bishop doesn't look great but i think he can improve things this is not quite a threat i mean it's a good looking move but uh i want to point out that that's not exactly threatening anything how do we want to play now Bishop is like not doing too much on that square, I want to say. Almost want to go rook f2. Knight f3 looks like a normal move. Maybe double the rooks. Oh wow, f4. Okay, so he's kind of all in here. 
I'll play Bishop G5. Maybe to eyeball the F4 pawn. And a good plan for me now is probably Rook E1, Bishop E4, and deal with, with that. Knight there. Well, we're probably missing something, but... Free pawns are free pawns. Let's take it. That's why we put our bishop there. I think he's got the right idea. You know, he's he's got a very active position here, but uh, I think he's just a little bit slow uh, on the uptake here because G2 is defended uh, from the queen. He's going to actually resign there. Poor guy. He kind of, he had a tactical little vision. You know, he was having the, <laughs> the gears were turning. Knight f5, and it's like knight d4. Looks like a, a tricky move because it hits the bishop. And you still got this queen here, but uh, unfortunately knight takes d4, guards everything. Hits the queen, guards the bishop, guards the pawn. It's like, I feel bad. He had the, he had that moment of tactical brilliance with knight d4, but just didn't work out. He did see the writing on the wall, yes. That was a fun game. I thought my opponent played well. Like I said, at some point, people are going to prevent you from putting your knight on e5. It's not going to be able to go there forever. Right? Pawn on d6 stops that permanently. But know that whenever your opponent stops you from putting a knight on e5, it almost always means that you can then start pushing your pawns in the center because guess what? They can't control the center with the d-pawn and control e5 with the d-pawn as well so that's uh that's always something to remember is that if the pawn's on d5 you can usually hop in and if it's on d6 then take the center nice okay b6 so this one will be uh because the bishop is getting to b7 very quickly You'll notice that if I play bishop d3 at any point, then the pawn will be lost. If I play knight f3 to stop the g2 pawn from hanging, well then the pawn doesn't get to f4. So I actually kind of, I kind of have to do this. And again, I can't move my bishop because of this, so kind of forced into the next series of moves. Knight f3 and wow, f5, okay. He's kind of doing the, the stone wall without the stone. Castle. Important to get castle. So many times we see people play knight e4, I play knight e5 and they get hit with queen h5 because guess what, they're not castle, they're not ready. Okay, that move looks very concerning for him. I'm looking at queen h5. And um, I'm worried for you, bro. Uh, knight e5 also threatens knight g6 now. So there's a few, few good things in the position right now. Knight e5 to play knight g6 is probably the, I think probably the best. But I am also thinking What's his next move going to be? Is it g5? No. Of course not. But he's got some issues. Light squares, very weak here. Knight e4 would just lose the game on the spot. Knight g6 is annoying because his rook's going to have to move and then he can't castle. And I don't think there's any way to avoid that right now. Even if he moves the bishop somewhere, we, just, we can still go in there. He plays g5. Wow. That is a uh, stunning move. Well, I think we know he's uh, he's sort of giving up the castling dream. Now, we'd love to play queen h5, but the knight's kind of preventing that particular maneuver. Um, knight g6, a knight takes f8. Playable, but maybe plays a little bit into his hands. I think knight uh, d2 to f3 is probably the most... Uh, most logical continuation. I think we'll do that. Of 
Well, now I think it's probably no secret that <laughs> we'll, we'll go into g6 and take the bishop. Okay, knight f3 was looking normal. Takes, takes, e4. Definitely catches my eye as a, as a thing to calculate because if the knight ever moves from f6, then I do get queen h5. I'm just not sure that that's actually enough. I don't think... Uh, I don't think I can sack a piece to to get that position, put it that way. Queen e2 to play e4. And there's something that uh, that's pretty attractive. Yeah, queen e2 to play e4 feels uh, feels pretty good. Because his king is in the center with no hope of castling, so I am kind of interested in this move. I think this will be uh, this will be pretty strong. Yeah, bishop e2. The thing with bishop e2 on the previous move is like it sets up one check. But ultimately, it's not where I want my pieces. So I, when I think about moves like that, I always feel like I'm uh, being a little one-dimensional, kind of playing hope chess, you know? Which is not what you want to do. Okay, queen e7. He's a move away from castling, but he does have to deal with this move. Bishop or knight takes. Both look pretty good. I mean, bishop takes is hard to say no to because it's a it's a pretty massive uh, massive pin there. Castles, bishop a6. I kind of like Takes, takes, rookie one makes a lot of sense. Those are the moves that that I'm looking at. Just a, a one move threat. Thanks, AG, the 33 month resub. Tier three from AG. Appreciate it, buddy. And Syzygy91, thanks for the 34 months. Oh, 33 and 34. Welcome back. All right, bishop takes f6, rook takes g2, queen takes g2, bishop takes, bishop takes queen. It will be quite good for me, so I think I'm able to do this one, despite the fact that it looks like it's playing into his hands. It's kind of a, I would say, more advanced calculation to see the entire way there, but you have to understand I won a piece on f6, and I was attacking a full hanging queen. So I'm getting a knight and a queen for nothing, and here I'm giving away a queen for a rook. So that should already be a pretty good, uh, pretty good platform for you to believe that you're probably going to come out on top at the end. This is a really interesting way that my opponent played. H6 and G5. <laughs> he was just uh, just sending it, as they say. Knight D2 and takes, rook takes. Once we got E4, we felt pretty good about things. Because again, this even though he's got a pawn on F5, it actually goes back to the exact same principle that I was talking about earlier when our opponent prevents us from putting a knight on e5 like plays d6 and doesn't play d5 our plan is usually to play e4 they can't really like control this square and control that square equally like something is wrong with your position if you don't have control over either of those squares because I'm starting with the pawns like this so I better control that square and if they don't I'm putting all my pieces on the other square it should be hard for your opponent to to keep up 
He's a smart for black to long castle away from the attack. I mean, it would always depend on the position, but for the most part, no. Part, no, black doesn't really long castle. Um, it's also easy for me to launch an attack over here, right? Two moves, bishop there. It, it'll be pretty easy as well. Damn it. No white pieces. All right. We'll make it work here. Maybe we can get him to capture. Ask him nicely. Gonna need a capture from you, my friend. I'm really putting myself out there. Into the world, you know? I'm, I'm being vulnerable. There we go. Now, I didn't say this was gonna work out, but <laughs> here we are. Okay, well, if last game was any indication, this should be seven is fine. Remember, we won our knight definitely on f6. And this check doesn't really do anything to us because we're able to just play c6. Now, Queen e5, he's got his ideas. Um, he's hitting two pawns, but again, I'm just gonna develop and cover both of them. And my next move is probably gonna be castling, although he's got me thinking twice here. Because technically if I castle, although this might have compensation, um, he'll be able to trade the queens, which is always meh, 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 not that nice. Um, so we might need to make some amends to our next move here. Takes, pawn takes is just a little gross. That's doesn't feel good. And it's forced right now because our bishop is pinned. So I, I really want to be able to take back with the bishop or a different piece. Don't want pawn takes. I'm thinking about knight here, knight here. Yeah, knight c6 or knight d7. The thing with knight d7 is it blunders that pawn. So knight c6 is a little more... I think it's slightly more preferred. But it's not really the square we usually put a knight on. Here I'll make an exception. Just to hit the queen. Why is his queen on e5? Hey, he brought it out there. It's honestly pretty scary. So I'm thinking that... I may even consider a move like king f7 here. Takes, takes, here, bishop e6. And although the queens get traded, he's definitely losing his pawn. And my rook's coming to e8. And I think I'm way ahead of development there. So that definitely looks good, but I think we have to abandon our knight e4. It's just, it's just not gonna happen. Like he's playing some kind of suspicious moves, but they definitely prevent Knight e4 and just simple castling because takes takes queen d5 you know where we're being prevented from living our best life here so here goes nothing this would be nice bishop c6 right buddy low chief low man beginning with check What's that? Gym in with check. I guess he's doing it two a days. He told me he was uh, going to the gym. Did you rope him in to F45? He actually says I did. Oh, that's great. <laughs> rope? <bro>. Yeah. <laughs> Bonded. <laughs> Ball and chain? Bro. Thirsty for 94. Rookie 8 is uh, pretty tempting as well. Man, the guy didn't blunder his queen there. I was almost sure that he would. 94, I just don't want to trade everything.
I'm actually pretty impressed. I might have blundered my queen there. Played bishop b5. And I feel like when you castle, it's it's more clear you're getting out of uh, getting out of the pin. But we played king f7, and he still took. Like, damn, can't get anything past this guy. Okay, let's get a few things going here. First of all, let's start by bringing a rook to an open file. Less concerned about this pawn, more just going to tickle. I want to see some weaknesses. There's some dark square weaknesses. Now when we take, of course, it's a little, little nastier on that, uh, that open file there. I'm looking at queen here. Threatens mate. Of course, it can be stopped in multiple different ways, so... It's not fantastic. Let's take because if knight e2 we go back. I was a little more concerned about the knight going f3 and e5. This this is more manageable. Queen f6 looks annoying. Bishop a6, and then I feel like the pin's everywhere. Something's wrong here. Something's wrong here. Pawn there. Unfortunately, I get checked. So I think the best way to deal with this is to move the king. That way I'm still actually threatening something. And if his pawn was on b2 and my rook was on a8, this position would be still a bit competitive. But just a simple move, rook b8, caused him to go here, and that's really impacted the game. Trying to create as many problems as possible. Bishops are hurting here. Remember, his king can't castle. It already moved from e1 to d1. All right, now, now there's got to be something. Takes here, and no matter what happens, literally you could take any way except the knight, and I'll take on c3. And if you do take with the knight, I think I take on a1. So it's finally time to cash in our advantage here. And after takes on e8, if that's what he wants to do, there will be rook e1 mate. Right, so you save your rook and you get mated on e1. Or you don't save your rook and, well, I'm up too many pieces of material then. I have to play queen e2 or something. Funny thing about this position is that you can pre-move rook e1 because even, and I was about to say, even if they go queen c3, you can still pre-move rook here because let's say they take with the queen, then you take on a1 and you might still get a winning position. Like, let's say that you had pre-move rook e1, you still might be able to win this game. It's still possible. So let's observe. This is me as a as a guy who pre-moved for rookie one. Let's take. We'll go this way unless he goes that way. And if he goes that way, I'll go d5. I'm gonna pre-move this because I'm not sure what he's gonna do. Okay, it goes there. All right, it's safe to go here. P3 
POV. I'm a guy who pre-moved rookie one. This is what it looks like. Once he's taken the pawn, then we uh, box him in there. There we go. GG. And that plays out our simulation of what would have happened if we pre-moved rookie one for checkmate here. It's still winning. That's how good our position was. He had a really weird opening. I wouldn't say it's good, but I would say it was like... It's it's as if the goal was to somehow prevent me from doing my doing my stuff here. I like King F7 instead of Castling. Maybe Castling was better, but there's something that feels a little cozy about this. Especially because after Castling, my Rook is going to end up on this square anyway. So I'm about to play Rook E8. So then, I wasn't sure. I kind of felt like I wanted my king on f7. The white pieces. His name is I can't win a thing. Well, I'm sorry in advance. Ooh, that's... That's never a good move, right? We want to play the move c3. That just helps us out. Let's play knight d2 to guard the e4 square. And knight f3, castles knight e5. You know the drill. Let's defend this. Now, hang on a second here. You've got this bishop, which should be on that square. I've gone over this before, actually. Bishop h7, knight g5. I win this. But after the king goes back to g8, I'm always a little concerned that my opponent can do something like f6. And it's like... It's not really a threat, but it feels weird to be giving up my, uh, my light squares like that. It never feels good. I win a pawn, but... Is it really that good? I mean, I guess we'll go for it. It's the the principal thing to do. It is a tactic. It does work. We're supposed to do it. Ugh. The annoying thing is if I go queen e2, then f5 happens. And he can put that knight on e4. And I don't really like dealing with f5, so. Bishop takes h7. We'll have to do it. And that's a good point. This might be a brilliancy. We have to do it. It's a brilliancy. Surely bishop h7 will be a brilliancy, right? Maybe e5. Yeah. Had a feeling. Had a feeling. Now, queen h5, he does have a move. So, he's not he's not doing something insane here. Do we go here or here? Bishop f5. I think I'll go here. Whoa! Well, okay then. It's funny when people like, unfortunately for them, don't realize that there's a defense. They play this move and it's like, then they find the defensive move they should have played instead. <laughs> it's like, a little awkward there on the move order.
Knight c6. All right, let's throw the H pawn down the board. An annoying move. Rook f3, there's technically bishop e2. But I'll tell you one thing. This bishop is his strongest piece on the board. I'm interested in eliminating it. He's just going back and forth here. What's up with this? Whoa! Holy smokes! This guy is a sender. Wait a minute, why can't he win anything? This guy's high T. What's his issue? This guy's got all the makings of being a winner. I'm gonna respect his chess. I'm gonna stonewall him with pawns here. Proving to the chat once and for all that en passant is not forced. And look, we got him to play king f7. <laughs> I'm very curious as to how that happened. Go with the knight first. I mean, the bishop's more or less trapped. Let's say that. Mm-hmm. Put our knight to h4. e5 is okay, just trades. Knight h4, I think, stuff is relatively, relatively indefensible. I say relatively. I got my triple pawns, I'm ready to go. Yeah, <laughs> all three of them, baby, here they are. <laughs> Chess at its finest. Of course, we can bring the uh, the queen over, but I think at this point we've got mate. GG. Fell into a little trap there, but I, I will say like, the only thing I'm focused on in this game is this move right here. This move is particularly bad. It gives me a free move, which I want. And I mean, what did the bishop do on a5? It sat there the entire game, did absolutely nothing. So this is just a fantastic position. White has a huge advantage, knight coming to e5. Um, and he falls for a tactic here, which we should go for. Let's check to make sure we got our brilliancy. What do you guys think? Yes or no? We surely got a brilliancy. Has to be. Yeah, <laughs> Of course it was. What an amazing move. That's from out of this planet. Bishop takes h7. Holy smokes, look at him go. He's that talented. What would I do if he defended with the bishop? <laughs> I love how it says only a, an accuracy. Um, if he played here, I probably would have taken. And then I would have looked to castle to hit that bishop. And maybe bring the rook up. Maybe bring the knight in. e4 to open up my bishop. I'm not gonna have force mate here, but it looks pretty damn good.
Let's go E6. Please take me. That's what we want. At least we can try to set up uh, F5 here. Let's go Bishop E7. We want to get the pawn in front if we can. And yeah, queen here is just no good. A lot of people are doing this early queen check, which is a little surprising to me. Get castled. Hmm. thinking of that but I think we'll slot our knight in first always taking with the F pawn it's our usual uh, usual plan now there's something to be said about maybe taking because pawn takes back bishop a3 if he's silly enough to go king b1 he actually gets mated immediately so I think as far as hope chess goes that's a pretty good hope chess variation. Because he would have to know to play king d2. Now, I'm almost sure that, that would lead to me. Like, I can almost guarantee it. But, that being said, we're going to continue with the most principled approach. No, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not falling into that trick of playing for the chat. This is an educational series. We're here to learn how to play good fundamental chess. We will not be tempted by such options. I regret it. We should have done it. He would have fallen for it. He would have fallen for it. Bring the knight. Okay, he's booted me out of e4, but which is kind of weird. He's actually lost a piece in doing so. So he's kicked my knight out. Okay. But the cost of removing my knight here, well, you've actually lost your knight. There's nowhere for that knight to go. Queen a3, still an option, maybe with knight to c4. So I'm definitely looking at that as a pretty serious consideration, but I'm not going to turn down a free piece. This is a, a big idea. Getting a knight to c4 will essentially lead to force mate here. Knight covers both of those squares. So really, really good square c4, but hey, he's trapped his piece, so. Okay, there's a rook check coming. We can always hide in the corner. I still think that a knight on c4 is gonna win me this game, so I'm all about that lifestyle. Let's let's get the knight there. I have a check and a check that I'm gonna keep in mind. Okay, he's down a piece and wants to trade queens. No objections, your honor. <laughs> Fine by me. Right, let's offer more trades. If rook g5, we'll throw in a little h6. I don't want to help the pawns there at all. It's a good move. He wants me to, to take that way. I 
and it gets in. still a trade so I don't mind doing this might even do it next turn but I don't think we need to at least not at the moment Looking to play b5, then just run this pawn all the way. This move has allowed me to do this, and I don't think I'm gonna miss the opportunity. Now, if I trade, he's not taking back like that. So, overall, a good thing, I think. We got that one extra piece working for us here. That's why our position is gonna be good with every single trade. I don't really have to calculate because I know I'm ahead. Let's bring the rook down. E5 looks like a good move. He's walking into this. He's walking into this more importantly. I mean, D4 is good, but this move looks lethal. Where's our mate here? The chat GMs surely can find it. Seems like a mate I, a guy like Boner Pole would be able to find. B4 pawn, someone said bishop. I'm losing faith. I'm losing faith here. That's right. Luis, Lolly. Seems like you're the only ones I can rely on here. B5 and B4. That's mate. can only delay it with bishop takes f5. Do we think he's a bishop takes f5 player? Hmm. Always interesting, you know? After taking, does he understand that this is me? Enough to play bishop f5. Because if he plays rook here, we still want to pre-move that. I'm going to say... We get low enough on time that he will. So in order to pre-move the rest of this game out successfully, and if I take here and I pre-move this, he might do this and you know, that that won't be good. If I take here and I pre-move this and this, well, he maybe he'll do rook g2. But if we get our time low enough, then I think he will look for bishop takes f5 so we can successfully pre-move it. And now we get the entire pre-move checkmate. Because we let the time go down, we're in his head, we know exactly what he's gonna do, and we can guarantee that the game ends with only pre-moves. There you go. But if we had, if we had taken first, we had just taken right back with, you know, a minute on the clock. He would have said, okay, I made it in one, whatever. Maybe he wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have been able to know what he was going to do. But by letting the time go down, we absolutely maximize. We're in his head. No chance for him. Read like a book. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Well, let's 
make a claim here. Is he gonna take this pawn? I have a feeling he is. What's he up to? Okay. F5. Really trying to understand the guy right now. How do we... <laughs> What's he really doing here? What the hell is this guy up to? I'm trying to piece together what he's thinking. What is the Jeff update? Hello, Maskinison. Obviously, the prospect of a Jeff update has reached the masses. Social media, media is abuzz right now with Jeff whereabouts updates. Jeff walked by the camera earlier. He walked by the camera, all right? And when he walked by the camera, five gifted subs came in for Jeff. But they weren't from Dr. Lord Mayonnaise, the usual suspect. They were from someone else covering on Dr. Lord Mayonnaise's behalf. And since then, order has been restored and Jeff is now on the way to the factory. So I make sure that everyone has their updates. Chicken pants with five gifted subs. Thank you to chicken pants. Oh, that's a uh, funky move there, my friend. Those are Magnus subs. There we go. We can now update everyone. Thank you to Chicken Pants. Now this knight is looking a little offside. While it's tempting to play Bishop here and just win the piece, I want to also point out that our opponent is taking the anti-Stonewall approach. They do not want to see a knight end up on e4. They truly do not. Bishop g3, tempting. I'm looking at bishop g5 after that. Okay, you know. Might defend. And that leads me to knight h5. Hitting the knight. And also eyeballing some squares, boy. I think knight h5 is going to be the decision. Wow, five subs for Magnus from Chicken Pants. Six subs came in from Airbus driver 321. Airbus just one upped chicken pants and cross 24X just one upped Airbus driver. I have no idea how this could possibly end. Five subs, six subs, and now seven subs. Wow, this is what we're all here for. And I tell you, Airbus driver 321 is not going silently into that good night. Eight subs from Airbus driver. Oh, Dr. Lord Mayonnaise is in with seven. We're on the way back down to five. Oh, hang on a sec. We've gone up to 20. Do I hear 21? <laughs> Champ 1977 is in with 20 subs. This is a private auction. We will be auctioning Magnus Carlsen's likeness. Currently, it stands at 20 subs. Thank you very much to Champ1977. Do I hear 21? 21, 21, 21, 21. Looks like he's uh, trying to play knight there. That's the, the vibe I'm getting from the guy. I'm going to give him a little check here. Five subs for Magnus started this whole thing off. And that was from Chicken Pants. But really, if you go back to the root of it all, 
You could say that this was all started by Jeff. Jeff earlier and his five sub fee every time he walks by the camera. I think that's what started this off. We have to go back to the real catalyst of the situation. Magnus came here looking for Jeff updates. And it all started... No, no, we have to really understand that Jeff is what's making this happen. The real MVP. <laughs> RPM549. We, <laughs> I do hear 21. And that's at the back. That's Ryan at the back. Ryan. 21 subs from Ryan. Thank you to RPM. Appreciate that, bud. We do see... There's no way he sees his rook hanging here, right? No way. Move the queen. There's no way he sees that. Oh, my queen's under attack. We can basically rule that out. That, that move is happening for sure. Thank you to Ryan. RPM549. In the back. Raising his hand nice and high. He's made sure to get in there. 21 subs. And it looks like... It really looks like we might be handing over the likeness to RPM. Ryan, thank you for the 21. Wow, he saw it. That's amazing. I'd like to go here. Gonna need a few moves before I can get there, but... Ah, Mr. Sir, maybe, maybe, no promises. No promises. I want a rook on the C file, I really do. Let me at you. Maybe queen b7 rook here. Holy smokes, I didn't see that one. I can safely say I did not calculate that. A3. We get on in there. Let's get on in there. You know what I'm going to do. Rook E1, queen takes E2, of course. Oh, he's giving it to me for free. It's a lot of mates about to happen. There's a lot of them. Going for the slow approach here. As soon as he starts threatening checks, we might be in trouble. Right? We, the checks are the problem. As soon as he plays like knight g6 and he's threatening knight e7, then, then it's difficult. Uh-oh. We gotta take this. It's the only way. <laughs> no checks. No checks. <laughs> Get that out of here. Living on the edge now. We're living on the edge. Oof. GG sod. Something tells me he's going to be a little sad now.
I'm gonna go with d4. This is important. D3, bishop d3, f4. They can't type exclamation mark prime. Oh, that's the point. That's the beauty of it. Look at them, they're all trying to do it right now. It's just amazing. It's me smart time. It's not working. Good player. He's got his bishop to f5. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Our knights want to uh, join the fray here. Knight d2, if knight f6, just to cover that square. Castle. A little bit, Wooly, a little bit. Let's finish off our uh, little setup there. And remember, our knight's appearing on e5. Thanks, High Liger, for the five subs. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what the hell is that? I'm going to need someone to explain that one to me. Anybody in the 1100 rating range, explain this move to me right now. I have never seen anything like this before. What? I mean, what is this? <laughs> What am I supposed to make of this, huh? I'm a little terrified. E4 could be a suspicious move. It's not, it's not as easy as it looks here. Yeah, e4, e4 is not the most obvious. Hmm. All right. I'm gonna go with the most stonewall move ever. Queen out of the way, because we've blundered, not blundered, but we've talked about this e4 move before. Holy smokes, g5. You gotta be joking me right now. Ain't no way g5 is a move. I refuse to believe it, it's time for e4. I will be winning a piece in three moves or less. Has to be true. Okay, blunder a piece for me, please. <laughs> I'm gonna need it to happen. Maybe knight e5, blunder the bishop. It's about that time. Gonna need that peace blunder from you, bud. Uh, okay, we didn't really get the peace blunder. I think we have some good moves here, but somehow he managed to not blunder a piece when e5 was coming, forking him. I mean, I'm impressed. Bishop f4 looks like a great move, but it's positions like this where queen takes f4 comes to mind. I think bishop f4 is just simpler, stronger. Because remember, if I take here, it's gonna be something takes on e5. Gonna have to take this way. It's not the best. Bishop takes f4. Boring. It's like a good move. Rook takes f4, I was looking at maybe takes. I'm just thinking, okay, his queen gets up. Am I really that happy there? I want to keep this default closed if I can. I'm going to take with the bishop. Take back here. I don't think there's any merit to doing that. Queen takes. Rook here. And I mean, everything looks like a problem right now because his <laughs> king is in the middle of the board. Like, what? That's hanging. Check.
you should have six. I mean, I, I'll do it. I'm, I'm, I'm here for this. I'm here for this from this guy. <laughs> this is Kingy Seven refutes the stone wall. I'm here for this. Go, Adrian VS. Go, Adrian. Oh, Adrian. He was about one move away from really having a just fine position. That's unfortunate, Adrian. Got, uh, he got too comfy. Poor Adrian. He still played. <laughs> I, mean, I think he played great. I love that game from Adrian. I'm looking to stop all your fun. Hey, let's take. <laughs> I'm ready to trade, Adrian. I'm taking you to the end game, Adrian. <laughs> I hope it's winning. Adrian. <laughs> there's only, there's one difference between you and I, Adrian, and it's a single pawn. That's what separates us in skill. Just a mere pawn. You can hardly tell the difference between us. Man, how did Adrian fare so well in a tactical skirmish and then just collapse when he got out of all the trouble? I mean, guy played king e7 and it's like, I wasn't going easy on him. I'm like, okay, we go here, bishop e7, Adrian's got all the moves, and a rate when he's done all the hard work. Blunder. Damn. And then he just treated all the pieces, which made my conversion way easier. Take the opportunity to play this. Very bad move, as we know, right? We always want to play this. So we're gonna wait and see how our opponent plays this, guys. But if they play d3 and they're not letting us get our knight in there, then we're probably gonna be playing e5 and maybe e4. And if they play d4, what the hell is that move? If they play d4, well then we can bring our knight in. So that move looks so weird. I'm just gonna attack it and it's like, where are you going? You gotta go right back where you came from. Or queen c1, I... <laughs> All right, that was a bit of a... Okay, we, we corrected him. You see, we're teaching people. He clearly developed his knight to the worst square. I'm, I'm just reminding him to go back and try again. There we go. All right, knight there. I'm definitely interested in knight e4. Um, I still think that he can play d3 after that. And I'm like, not thrilled. <laughs> Don't love that. So I'm going to play e5. And people love playing this move. It doesn't do anything. I can just kick you and you have to go right back. I mean, knight e4 takes. I take with the f pawn as well. I and mean, there's a number of reasons why I think knight g5 is probably not good. But yeah, it is, it is interesting. People keep going for it. Let's go knight e4. Stonewall energy. Of course, we're taking with the f pawn daring our opponent maybe to castle that way holy smokes that move could not have been worse <laughs> oh guys i think uh <laughs> i think there's gonna be some pain headed his way takes 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 check all look like good moves 
There's a, a ton of good moves at my veil. We're gonna start with a check. So rook takes and takes would lead to like a pretty good position, maybe even like almost a mate if he goes that way. But again, hope chess. This doesn't hope for anything. This opens up the app plot. I mean, this is just crushing. I don't know how my opponent is surviving here. Check. Tempting to go with the queen, but like if the bishop's gonna block anyway, I think I prefer to have my rook there. Oof, after king there it is really just my choice how how I want to uh, give checkmate here because this looks, uh, shall we go with lost? Check. Worse. We have to bring the king to us. This is our game for 1200. We can't be can't be playing it simple, playing it safe. Closer, my guy. And there's a check and a mate there. Don't mind if I do. But of course, of course, of course, it wouldn't be complete without mating with the lowest value piece possible. Check. And now I would love to play the move G5, delivering checkmate on the spot. But G5 is too low T. It's too low T. Oh. oh, my back hurts from that one. Oh. Oh. Sorry, guys. Oh, that one hurt. Oh. oh. Oof. Oh, oh, sorry about that. The old man still got it though. We've still got it. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. There we go. 1200. He got the mate in there. Yes, the opponent has 11 extra pieces. <laughs> He's up 11 points in material. That's good. Now, here is the terrible thing. You know, you, you play a game like that. You put someone in the dirt like that. And then you go check the accuracy. You check the game review. And there's no goddamn brilliancies. It's like, how is that fair? Those were all brilliancies. It's just absolute disgrace that we don't get credit for our hard work. And in fact, they do me worse than that. They say, you know what? Not only are your moves not brilliancies, look at that, look at that, look at what they do to me. Calling it a miss, a miss. Ah.
Rook takes h3 is excellent. Not a miss. But it's an excellent move. Chest.com is starting to learn. <laughs> yeah, right. That one was a miss. Yeah. <laughs> that one was a miss. They're not giving me credit for that one. They're going to learn. It's a, you know, self-learning, machine learning AI. They're going to get it eventually. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's looking good. And remember, we played that game like a 1750. It was a well-fought middle game that I got the better of. That's exactly the way I feel. Wow, look at you. You made it, didn't you? To the end of another Stonewall episode. Well, congratulations. And if you're watching and enjoying, but you're not subscribed, go ahead and click that button right now. Also click that bell to turn on post notifications so you never miss another video. See you in the next episode.